We're back again at the Edward A. Dixon Gallery talking about the rhythm of love with author Sonny Scott and poet and musician David Matthews. Uh, I want both of them to give a brief introduction and then we can get a little bit into the book and other projects that are coming up along with it. Well, Dave, uh, David and I want to thank you, Ed, for allowing us to come back into this beautiful art gallery where we really and truly are mesmerized with all the new additions and all the new artists that uh, are being presented by your gallery. It's just a fantastic place, and it, it really helps uh, promote my book because my heroine in the book, my, my protagonist, is uh, an art gallery owner. So um, this is just a perfect atmosphere to talk about all the new things that's going on with So Far Productions and uh, our proposed series, The Rhythm of Love. Okay, and I know and David can introduce himself also, but David's new to the team, but tell us a little bit about him joining the team. And, you know. I'm really excited about David Matthews. He's an author, poet, musician. I've known him for 400 years. Uh, really a long time. We both entered that poetical world together uh, and his and his life took off uh, as a poet. Mine, I'm more of a classroom style writer. I wrote uh, for the classroom with David is just a fantastic personality as it comes to uh, poetry, music, um, as a writer period and so he, he he's he's got a great presentation and to himself as an author a poet and a musician I'd like for him to tell you all the exciting things he's done over the years and what made me gravitate towards him to become a part of my team I'm so excited to have him so I want I want to turn it over to Dave and let him tell you a little bit about his past and how he how he became uh, uh, internationally and nationally known uh, as a poet <laughs> well, thank you, Hassani. Uh, I had the pleasure of getting a chance to be discovered by Nikki Giovanni and back in 1973. Uh, she kind of put me under her wing and uh, kind of showed me the ropes. I developed my own presentation called An Evening on Broadway with author, poet, musician David Matthews, which consisted of about 10 musicians who were also actors. And we put together a production that uh, displayed my poetry. Within an hour, an hour and a half to two hours, you got a variety of poetry done many different ways, with actors, without actors, with music, without music. Um, and it's funny because I'll never forget when Nikki first uh, was working with me, she said, what's gonna make you different? There's so many other poets out there. I said, I'm gonna be a new exposure. When they see me, they're gonna definitely say that they've never seen anything like that. Uh, and when you think of most poets that you come to see, they have a podium and they're going to come and they're going to read their material. I never read anything. All the space performed it. There were costuming, there were lights, there was sound. And uh, it was a way of entertaining you and giving you a message at the same time. Uh, doing that, I was able to travel on the university circuit, did over, over 300 universities in 21 different states, got a chance to go to Europe, uh, got to open on stage with war, Grover Washington Jr., got to work with Gil Scott Heron, uh, and played with several other different bands as a musician. I'm a percussionist, so I play 19 different Latin percussion and African instruments. Uh, I've learned that besides being an artist, that you also have to be a business person. So uh, coming up, uh, learning the ropes on just managing, booking, performing, uh, I think you need to know every aspect of it, and I've tried to learn every aspect that it is from being a roadie. I started out being a roadie for a group when I was 12. So I've been at the low end, and I've been at the high end. Uh, and when it comes to managing and actually putting shows together and putting performances together, that's something that I do. Um, working with uh, Hassani has become uh, not only an honor, but a privilege, uh, because she's a very talented artist herself. and. Hopefully, what I can add to what she wants to do makes us very successful. Now, for those who don't know, Sonny, tell us a little bit more about the book again, The Rhythm of Love. Tell us a little, a little synopsis of the story. Well, uh, again, um, The Rhythm of Love uh, is based on an African-American female coming from a very wealthy background, which is something that's not being depicted uh, in mass on the screen today in any form 
Uh, we normally see ourselves as drug addicted. We see ourselves as baby mamas. We got 10,000 kids trying to raise them on our own and somebody becomes a superstar, therefore we begin to shine with it. And those stories are a part of our culture, but they're not everything about our culture. We are a people that have always excelled. Right. And um, I think that when I considered how I was going to write my heroine in the story, I wanted her to be world class. She's an international traveler. Uh, like I said, she's coming from a very, very wealthy background. She's an only child. Um, and she indulges herself. But as she's growing into herself, she's beginning to understand what it means to be a woman in a male-dominated world and what's going to make changes. And in the interim, uh, and I'm glad you asked me that too, to, de to define her, she's understanding that she's not as powerful as a... Um, I guess a beauty queen. She thinks of herself as someone that's never been measured up to where her white constituents are. The white women in her life have always been kind of glamorous. So she was just a little tag along, little black female with money and didn't really know her identity. So she begins to grow into her identity and she makes a lot of mistakes along the way as she's finding herself inundated with uh, sexual prowess um, men with money and how they view life and how they make money. So she's got to find a way to be herself as she grows into her femininity. Okay, and that, I know you've had some success with the book already, but now you're taking it to the next level and trying to create a series with the book. And of course, that's part of the reason why we're here to create awareness, but also uh, that endeavor is takes a lot of manpower, people, and money especially. So uh, I know there's different ways that uh, uh, product, production uh, companies such as So Fire Production, I know that's your production company, uh, do these things to try and raise money. Um, so what kind of things are you doing right now to kind of, uh, you know, budget, fund and budget the movie? Well, again, you, your, your, your interview skills I just love because they always hit the nail. Uh, on the head. We are, at So Far Productions, extremely excited about a fundraiser that we're doing, but more than anything, it allows me then to gravitate towards where I started and where Dave started, which is poetry. I started as a poet. Um, I met Dave uh, uh, in a competitive field. And actually, Dave is the first spoken word artist that I ever met because I'm a classroom poet. I'm the kind that they invite to the classroom and I stand there and I read and I lecture and I talk about whatever inspired me to write that piece. But Dave gives you a real presentation. So when I came up with, I need to make more money to seed this, this project, um, I came to him and I said, I need a manager. I need someone to help me mold what I want to do and make it successful and make it a presence that won't be forgotten. And I said, I, I, I want to do a poetry recital. And Dave said, you want to do a poetry awakening? And I said, that's what I want to do. And then I realized that that's what he did back in the 70s. He awoke people to the various presentations that one could give as poets. And so when we came together and decided that um, we were going to do this poetry recital. Um, we've gotten uh, some of the very best uh, artists, poetical artists that you're ever going to experience. We have uh, several coming from uh, New York, one from Indianapolis, one from Canada, and we have a fantastic young man from Dayton, Ohio. But more than that, we have David Matthews. We've got him and uh, excited about the, the whole project and I'm hoping before you end the interview that he'll grace us with one of his one of his pieces. Okay and yeah tell us a little bit more about the, uh, David if you could tell us a little bit more about the, the project what what can we expect from that? You're going to experience six poets that night that are each going to do probably about five poems so if you're thinking about it that's about 30 poems that you're going to hear during the night and they're all going to have to do with life and love i mean something that all of us have to deal with anyway each one of us has our own little indi different indi individuality uh, our own different presentation of how we 
bring forth a message. And I think that variety of presentation is what people are going to be soaked up on. Because uh, as I've been listening to the poets, it, once you hear one, you're ready to hear the next one, you're ready to hear the next one, and you, you're just going to be like, at the end of the night, whoa, what did all I get? I want people, when they come to that show, to come as real big sponges so that they can absorb, take in, and soak up the knowledge that they're going to receive that night. It's poetry in the round. It's something that I envision and what I told Dave about it. I said, you know, we see spoken word. We go to some of these shows where the young people are really spelling out wonderful things, but we don't see old school poets anymore. And we don't see it so focused on anything that's intimate, uh, loving. We see a lot of uh, political awareness, um, environmental aware awareness, uh, so I said, I want them to do it a little bit differently. I want to have each poet follow one another. So David came up with the idea of, yeah, what, what we'll do is we'll seat them in such a way that after I say my piece, the light shines on the next poet to say their piece. And it's a continual poetry in the round. And then after that, after that wonderful show of poetry, we have a gala. And um, the gala uh, allows... Our, our, our guest to to meet and greet the poets, have a little music, a dance. It's just a very nice, nice event on February 14th uh, of 2020 for you to bring someone and say, hey, I just want to take you out and show you a good time on this day. Um, give you an experience that you uh, have never experienced before. And what we've discussed is that uh, Rhapsody and Soul, which is the name of the uh, of the programming that we're offering on February t uh, 14th, uh, is not going to be just one time only. We're going to do this continuously throughout the year, and then every 14th uh, of February, we'll be presenting something a little bit different, more exciting. But Dave's got this really wonderful venue for uh, for uh, the 14th. Um, coming up. It's not only going to showcase the poets, but it'll also showcase some musicians, um, artwork. We have a very well-known artist by the name of Ronnie Williams designing our, our backdrops, who will be present at that time too. And um, hopefully um, they'll be able to come to your gallery and see some of his work at that time in February as well. Okay. Um, so again, tell me the details again, the when and the where. Um, it's going to be held at the PNC Arts Annex on um, February 14th at in, in 2020, on 2020, um, in Dayton, Ohio, uh, 2nd and Ludlow Streets. Um, the gala will also be there, so there's a theater, and then there's a big area for the gala to be, to be held. Uh, there'll be uh, food and uh, a cash bar and music okay and that's for the attendees now if somebody wants to be an uh, organization or corporation wants to be uh, part of this and, and sponsor this this wonderful event who would they contact how would they contact you to, to um, do that? we really really are looking for sponsors Dave and I have been working really hard we have uh, uh, one of our sponsors right now is so excited Minuteman Press uh, Jesse Gathers has come in and said, hey, we're going to do all of the programs for you. We're going to do all the brochures for you. Posters, billboard. Billboard. <laughs> he's, gonna, he, he's designing the billboard. I mean, they just jumped in and loved on us because they loved the concept. And, of course, Jesse Gathers' family is well-known philanthropist. Um, he's recently purchased Minuteman Press uh, out in um, Centerville, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, sits on about three boards. Yeah, he's, he says uh, well, quite a few boards. As, as a person interested in the arts, you can probably find even several of those that are arts-oriented. But um, it's amazing to me the kind of people that have agreed to support us. Uh, David's contacted uh, the wonderful, fabulous uh, Marsha Bonhart, who has agreed to uh, be our hostess for that evening and present. Um, we got some special things happening so um if they really wanted to contact us um 
you can uh, leave at the bottom of this uh, a phone number or uh, they can email. Okay, so, so far. Yeah, they can email so far productions2000 at gmail.com as well. Okay. But also, there will be a number that you can put on your, on your um, Facebook page and your YouTube page for them to contact. Okay, I'll do that and uh, look forward to, to the event. Uh, definitely look forward to in the future to seeing the series uh, come to fruition. Yes. And uh, if everyone just hangs on, um, right after this we'll have a selection from uh, David Matthews that I'm sure you will enjoy. I think they will. Message. Children of the earth, the time has come for us to go forth and become fruitful in the sharing of our wisdom. Giving back to our foregoing the knowledge of our experiences which we have collected by walking through closed and open doors, by walking inside weak and strong minds, by walking and touching cold and warm hearts, by walking down endless and dead in alleys, by walking beside and inside self. Look at my eyes until you become comfortable with their rich, dark color of distance, past, present, and future. And if you might, while also gazing, open your mind to its greatest capability, it is very possible that you will set free an extension of yourselves. Please, please do not deny or fear this flow of positive energy, for it is only a blessing stored upon you from birth.